Greece is in such turmoil. When Greece falls, then Spain is going to fall. When Spain falls, you know, everything is so well lined up that unless something happens, um, okay, where it is? He's appearance. Oh, no, that's not it. It's, um, oh, yeah. Uh, he opened the third seal. I looked in a black horse, and he who sat on it had a, this is 6 5. He who sat on it had a pair of scales in his hand, and I heard in the voice of the midst of the four living creatures saying, A quart of wheat for a denarius. A denarius was one day of pay back then. You made a denarius for a day of work. So you got a quart of wheat for a day of pay. A quart of wheat is enough for one person to live on. In other words, you go and work, you get enough to pay for yourself, but you don't have enough to feed your wife or your children. That is what's coming in the world, and it just looks like we may be heading there. Okay, quart of wheat for a denarius, and three quarts of barley for a denarius. Okay, and do not harm the oil and the wine. So that means that instead of eating wheat, you're going to end up having to buy barley in order to feed yourself, a wife, and one child. Okay, barley obviously for some reason isn't as the same quality. Does anybody know about barley? I have no, no idea. Isn't that what you feed the horses? Barley? I, I don't know, whatever, but... Yeah, I know. Okay, well, you're going to get three quarts of, quarts of barley instead of one quart of wheat. So you have a choice. And I would assume that wheat is probably better for you. I, I don't know. I don't cook, so I have no idea. But it, it's what? I think barley is probably better for you. Better for you. Well, then that's what you're going to want to buy if you want to feed your wife and children, too. Oh, okay. There you go. Barley seed. Barley seed. Yeah, okay. Well, if you want to feed your wife and children in the tribulation, you got to buy barley. Okay, w wife and child, you get one, okay? Anyway, because a quart of wheat ain't going to get it. But uh, also it all this reflection of the financial situation, because this could also be um, superinflation rather than just... Um, uh, yeah, well, that's right. Inflation. Superinflation, you can make a zillion dollars. And what, what happened in uh, Germany right before the, uh, World War II? They literally were printing money. And in the morning, coffee would cost, we'll say, $15 million. And then by lunchtime, they'd have raised the rate again so that now coffee was $72 million. And people were taking in uh, wheelbarrows full of money just to buy a loaf of bread because the money was becoming worthless so quickly as they printed more and more and more. And this was, this was, they have pictures of these old guys that went to the bank and would be taking wheelbarrows full of money to the store just to buy a loaf of bread because it meant nothing. It was absolutely useless. And hyperinflation, if it comes here, if we default and then something happens and this one guy at the beginning of the year, I don't know if you listened to that, um, he had that thing on the internet, um, he, he predicted the collapse of Fannie Mae. He predicted the collapse of Freddie Mac. He predicted the, uh, uh, the uh, other troubles with the, the auto thing. He's been right on target all along. And he That's said, what's that? It might be. He did a thing on the internet. And you can click on it. Yeah, the video. Uh, oh, is it? It's, uh, it wouldn't surprise me. He's an investment counselor. And he, he said that. 2011, he's predicted everything else and he's been right on target. He said 2011 is the year that America is going to collapse financially. Yeah. And so we'll see. I mean, we've still got uh, six more months to go, five more months to go. We'll see. And he figured it would be towards the end of 2011, I think, didn't he? Isn't that what he said in the video? September, October. So we'll see. But it, it could be. And once again, please don't get scared. I, I'm not here to scare people. I'm just saying that this guy is a financial advisor that is warning people of what to do now. And I haven't done any of them. The only thing that I've done, I'm going to tell you just so you know what I've done, and you can all come over to my house and we'll participate in this together. I bought two cast nets because they last a couple years each, and so I have two extra cast nets, which I've never done before. I bought an axe because I know which trees to cut down, and I, I, I uh, 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 know how to get the food out of them. And so I have an axe, I got two cast nets, and I bought a rifle. And to me, if the economy was to collapse, it's a little 22 rifle, only for shooting little animals. But um, squirrels, squirrels and, and a possum and stuff like that. But I, I've been buying uh, uh, 500 rounds of ammunition whenever I have spare money in my pocket. And so I've got like four or 5,000 rounds of 22 ammo. So I can go and shoot squirrels all day long, you know, and it's probably not a great thing to do. Uh, as far as uh, living, but when you gotta eat, you gotta eat. And if it doesn't happen, I'll never shoot the gun in my life. I have no desire to do it. But I figure that here's my logic: is that it says in the Book of Lamentations that the people's gold is lying in the streets. It has no value, no value at all. They just simply the rubies, all of the things that they treasured, have no value. I figured the one thing that does have value 
will be ammunition. So I've just been buying it, you know, and if I need it, I need it. If I don't, I don't. I don't really care one way or another, but I'm not investing in gold. I mean, if you do, I'm not telling you not to, but gold is a, a, an international commodity. If the economy collapses, the problem with having gold is that there's nobody there to buy it. As an individual, there's nobody there to buy it because they can't afford to buy the gold. So the only thing you can do is you can take your gold and you're buying gold coins, which are an ounce each or whatever, half an ounce. You've got to give away the entire coin in order to buy something. And you've wasted $15,000 worth of investment on a couple loaves of bread because it's a, it's a commodity that people can't deal in. We don't deal in it the way that banks do. And so the only people that are profiting off of the gold are the people that are selling it in large quantities, not the small quantity. What we'll have to do someday is we'll have to take the gold and we'll have to cut it into teeny little pieces and say, here's a little piece and I'll give you this. And who's going to want to do that? I mean, I don't know. Whatever. I, you know, but please don't be scared because we are the redeemed of the Lord. It doesn't matter what happens to our bodies. It really doesn't. It's scary. It worries me on the physical sense, but in the end, it, it doesn't matter. You know what? You That's what? why the people um, in the Middle Ages were willing to be burned at the stake. Yeah. Because their body wasn't important to them, only the Lord. That's right. They died with the Lord's name on their lips because they understood there is a sure hope. What we have here, you know, but it does say in the book of Lamentations, better that you die by the sword than these people that are dying by famine. And that's a misquote. But by, dying by famine has got to be a really, you know, because you're living through the process. We're tied into this body, whether we like it or not. We're tied into it. We're stuck in here. And so the very fact that we have to live this way, you know, it, it, it makes it hard. So I'd rather just kick off and, you know, have the what? Rapture. Oh, yeah. Well, you know what? And I have a feeling that if things start going in that direction, that's right. It, it, the tribulation is right on its heels, and I have a feeling that if it gets to that point, the rapture is going to happen anyway. I, you know, I don't want to say that and then have people be angry at me when we're all laying around and without air conditioning in our cars wondering where we're going to get our next loaf of bread from. But I do think that the rapture is... We're on the heels of it. I, I, I just think so. So... All right, enough scaring people for the day because all I do is, I, I'm, I'm one of us, in other words. We're all in this boat together. Yeah. Poor squirrels. I bet they do. I bet they do. They, yeah, I ate a squirrel in a high school. My, here's what we used to do. i got to tell you this story. See, this is how you said this. We used to have a guy that was, he was, you know, back when I was young, Fruitville was, that was Redneck Town. Now it's a big road. And, yeah. I mean, if you were from Fruitville, you had a, a pickup truck with guns on your rack in high school. That's, that's the way it was. And this guy lived over on Fruitville, and he'd shoot gators and squirrels and all this, and he'd bring them in. And the art teacher, Miss Davis, who was still there all these years later, would cook it, and we'd heat it up on the kiln at, at, because we did pottery. And so that was the only time I ever had squirrel in my life was cooking it up on the kiln. At, at, uh, he, oh, he did all of the he did all of the preparation. Then she'd add in her spices, and boy, could she cook, man! Oh, man! But that that was that was kind of fun. Anyway, sorry to get so far away today, but you know, uh, okay, please go ahead. When all Egypt began to feel the famine, the people cried to Pharaoh for food. Then Pharaoh told all the Egyptians, "Go to Joseph and do what he tells you." When the famine had spread over the whole country. Joseph opened the storehouses and sold grain to the Egyptians. For the famine was severe throughout Egypt. All right, same thing when uh, there's no a famine. No, 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 no more welfare, that's right. Yeah. And when we have a famine in the tribulation, it says go to Joseph. What are they going to say? Go to Jesus. It's your only hope. This is your only hope. So you're seeing the parallel once again. Go to Jesus. And what do we call them in the uh, tribulation? We call them the tribulation saints. People that are willing to go to Jesus at the expense of their own lives. They're going to either be carried through the tribulation or they're going to die in it. But go to Jesus. Well, that's what he said. Go to Joseph. Okay? So, uh, and all the countries from the surrounding areas came to buy the grain because there was, was, the famine was severe in all the lands. The Lord is working out His purposes in this. Okay, might as well, we got 15 minutes, so we might as well start 42. But we're going to have to make sure that we have you log in where we stop because we're going to be in the middle of 42 before we... Uh, okay, go ahead. 
When, jo when Jacob learned that there was grain in Egypt, he said to his sons, why do you just keep looking at each other? Well, you know what? I got to tell you, it's funny to read that, but imagine them. They're, they're tent dwellers. There's no, nothing for the animals to eat. There's nothing for them to eat. What do you do? You just sit and you look at each other. I, I mean, it's funny. I, every time I read that, I laugh like you do, but that's what they would have been doing. You know, just and think about it. If, if, if the ball drops in America and we don't have any more TV and we, don't have, we can't drive our car because there's no gas, what are we going to do? You sit and look at each other. It's, it's just the human condition. It's, you look at movies that are filmed in areas of poverty, people are sitting around looking at each other. There's just, what do you do? You know, you can't go out and work in the fields. You sit in the, yeah, yeah, oh boy, oh boy. Okay, go ahead. He continued, I have heard that there is grain in Egypt. Go down there and buy some for us so that we may live and not die. Then ten of Joseph's brothers went down to buy grain from Egypt. But Joseph, jo Jacob did not send Benjamin, Joseph's brother, with the others because he was afraid that harm might come to him. So Israel's sons were among those who went to buy grain, for the famine was in the land of Canaan also. Now Joseph was the governor of the land, the one who sold grain to all its people. So when Joseph's brothers arrived, they bowed down to him with their faces to the ground. And as soon as Joseph saw his brothers, he recognized them, but he pretended to be a stranger and spoke harshly to them. Where do you come from? he asked. From the land of Canaan, they replied, to buy food. Although Joseph recognized his brothers, they did not recognize him. Mm -hmm. Then he remembered his dreams about them and said to them, You are spies. You have come to see what, where our land is unprotected. No, my lord, they answered. Your servants have come to buy food. Okay, and this also goes to, I think it's a book of Zechariah, where... They still don't recognize Jesus. They haven't acknowledged him. He knows who they are. And at some point in the future, it says that they will see him and they will recognize for him and they will mourn for him as one mourns for an only son. Uh, I think it's Zechariah 14. Anyway, this is coming. The fulfillment of this is future. Okay, this isn't something that's happened yet. But Israel is waiting to see their Savior. And they're going to be looking in the wrong place for a while, but eventually they will recognize Jesus for who they are. And this is, we'll, we'll see a parallel in this in a couple minutes, hopefully today. Go ahead. We are all the sons of one man. Your servants are honest men, not spies. No, he said to them, you have come to see where our land is unprotected. But they replied, your servants were twelve brothers, the sons of one man who lives in the land of Canaan. The youngest is now with our father, and one is no more. Joseph said to them, It is just as I told you, you are spies, and this is how you will be tested. As surely as Pharaoh lives, you will not live this, leave this place unless your youngest brother comes here. He said, One of your number to get your brother. The rest of you will be kept in prison, so that your words may be tested to see if you are telling the truth. If you are not, then, as surely as Pharaoh lives, you are spies. Okay, so he's making an oath on Pharaoh, not just on his own authority, but on Pharaoh, saying there's no way that this is going to happen. And why is he doing this? Well, not just because of what they did to him. It is because of what they did to him, but there's something more that he's trying to get. What is it? it, it, it he's doing this for a specific reason. Okay, it is because of what they did to him, but why is he doing it? He's not doing it out of uh, anger at him. Okay, he wants, he wants to get them all together. Well, he wants to get them all together. There's one. There okay, and there's Show one more thing. What? Their ways. The what? Show them the error of their ways. That's well, to show them the error of the ways, and also so understand. to understand if they are truly repentant and what happened.